What we need what is not need more medication, more medication but more education, more education, because the best prescription is knowledge. This is Exposé coming to you live from Lagos, Nigeria every Monday on Instagram, YouTube and Facebook simultaneously. And I'm your regular host, Tony Akiyami. Don't, don't forget, what we need what is we not need more, medication, more medication, but more but education, more education because the best prescription is knowledge. Hello and welcome to Expose with Tony Akinyemi. I'm your regular host and I'm always honored to be here with you every Monday evening, 8 p.m. Nigerian time. Whatever your time is, where you are watching us from, we greet you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And we appreciate your time with us on Expose all the time. We have started this conversation on medical gases or therapeutic gases for several episodes now. I did an elaborate, you know, health education in relation to these gases. And um, from last week, I started to interview uh, Dr. John Toagbie on ozone therapy and oxygen therapy in particular. And I hope that sometimes in the future, I'll be able to bring yet another medical practitioner to interview him on hydrogen therapy. Now, so. We are continuing our conversation with Dr. John Tor Agbiye regarding ozone and oxygen. Last week, he made mention of something in the dying minutes of our episode. Uh, we didn't have enough time on our hands to be able to look at it, but today I want him to elaborate further, and that is the concept of oxygen utilization. Now, it is said that oxygen utilization is the most important predictor of risk for degenerative disease and premature aging. And being an expert in oxygen therapy, ozone therapy, uh, mitochondria uh, optimization, and uh, cellular optimization, uh, and all of that, I believe you are the right person that should be asking this question. What exactly is this thing called oxygen utilization? And how does it influence our wellness and our longevity? at the end of the day. Yes, thank you. Uh, it is nice to be back again this week. So let's go straight. Oxygen utilization is a term coined by Dr. Frank Schellenberger. Dr. Schellenberger is one of the world's famous ozone therapists. And uh, he has had a practice. He is a medical doctor, an MD. So over had uh, close to 50 years of medical practice. And he wow. is a driver of ozone therapy in North America, specifically United States. Let me show you one of uh, his uh, you know, books that I will encourage everybody interested in ozone therapy to read. This is the book. The Ozone Miracle. Yeah, Frank Schellenberger. <laughs> so he, he coined the term oxygen utilization. And not only that, he has used a technique to measure this. So what is oxygen utilization? Oxygen utilization is the ability of taking oxygen as we breathe into the body. The oxygen gets absorbed in the blood and how much of the oxygen is actually delivered to the cell. Right and specifically the mitochondria. So he used the term oxygen utilization to drive this process, and it is key. Thus, it is not just enough for us to be breathing oxygen, 
but the oxygen must leave the must reach the target, which right. is the the cell and precisely the mitochondria. Right. And over the years, Dr. Schellenberger has been able to measure this in all the patients that come to his clinic. And came with the conclusion that those whose oxygen utilization is sufficient, that is to say it is 100%, they are likely not to come down with any disease. And he also concluded that today in the United States, there are over 100,000 people that had lived for over a hundred years plus. And if you measure the oxygen utilization expressed as energy coefficient is 100% efficient. So it is not enough for us to breathe in oxygen, but it is very critical that the oxygen should be delivered to the cell for energy production. And this is what ozone does exactly. Now, when I mentioned that Dr. Schellenberger is able to measure this, how does he do it? He uses a technique known as bioenergy testing. It's actually an equipment. It costs about $25,000, US dollars where the patient comes in, he measures the oxygen level and also compared it with those healthy persons of the then healthy persons. And then he expresses it in percentage as energy cohesion. So those with 100% oxygen utilization efficiency, they never had diseases, they will not come down with diseases, degenerative diseases like cancer, diabetes, hypertension, and the rest of it. We are actually planning on getting that equipment. Dr. Lantern and myself are planning on getting that equipment to our clinic in Abuja, where we would be using the, the that is energy, <laughs> but, BET. I'm clapping for you here. I'm clap. I'm clapping for both of you here. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. It's it's actually now it becomes a you know a predictor of your risk of coming down to you know you know disease. The 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 S what we call SpO2 alone is not a good indicator of your rehab. SpO2 yeah, yeah. simply means oxygen saturation in your body. Yeah, you yeah. can have your body saturated to 80%, I mean, 90% of 95, 96, but if this oxygen is not reaching your cell or the mitochondria for energy production, you are susceptible to coming down with disease. I said there's a difference between oxygen saturation and oxygen utilization. Yes. SpO2, it means the level of oxygen in the body. This could saturation. be the one in the circulation. It is right. just circulating through your blood system. The SpO2 right. will say, yeah, you are 90, even 98 or 99. Yeah. But how much or of what that, is the efficiency? of that is being delivered to the cell, specifically right. to the mitochondria for ATP you know, production. That is what you call oxygen utilization. If you have that 100, it means that 100% of the oxygen in your body is able to be delivered to the target uh, point, which is the mitochondria. And with that, you are on top of the world. No, you not come down with you no know, disease. This is what Dr. Schellenberger uh, you no know, tells us, and he has done this for over twenty years, twenty five years. Wow! Yeah, you you've touched on a very very important area there. Now the question I want to ask is that there will be two of them, two in one. One is 
if somebody gets their oxygen utilization or energy quotient, is that what you called it, EQ? Yeah. yeah. They got their energy quotient, their oxygen utilization potential, they get it measured. And let's say somebody scores like 90% instead of 100%. How do you help that person to improve to 100% energy uh, oxygen utilization? That's the first question. Second question, do you currently have the tools to measure energy, uh, oxygen utilization in your clinic in Abuja? In terms of efficiency, we've already said ozone is a bioactivated oxygen molecule. It's more reactive than oxygen. That's why once it gets into the body, it has so many metabolic and biochemical you know, it functions that are beneficial to the body. So ozone therapy is a method of augmenting and upgrading oxygen utilization. So it is via ozone therapy. And this takes me, you see, ozone therapy is not just meant for, you know, disease conditions, I mean, treating diseases. There's what we call preconditioning. Preconditioning, right. ozone therapy, they are preconditioned. It simply means taking it uh, prophylactically to protect and prevent us from coming down with, you know, disease. So you can uh, augment oxygen utilization via ozone therapy. And if you are not yet sick, they are a method or, or protocol known as preconditioning. In, in most cases, such persons, you just require to come in just once, uh, I mean, a month, then you take your, I mean, ozone, so that uh, the level of oxygen in your body that is delivered to the cell is up at, at that level. Now your second question, do we have uh, bioenergy testing in our clinic? No, I had earlier said, we're making plans and arrangement to really get that. I had actually debated uh, with my with my colleague. That's why we gave uh, priority in purchasing things like uh, you know I mean Undermed, which is a German technology over the BET you know machine, because I argued that how many of our people would actually understand this concept and really patronize us because uh, that became an issue. So we said, but uh, Undermed had its own dual purpose. It diagnoses and treats at the same time. Uh, people would really relate with this more than the concept of coming to check, not even SpO2, looking at how much of the oxygen that is in the body is delivered in the mitochondria for the ATP production. They may not uh, see that uh, easily. But I think uh, after two years of with Undermed, we've come to the conclusion that we'll get a BET you know, machine so that we can be measuring uh, oxygen utilization in our place. So that will be coming very soon. And we're also looking at, at some other modalities. I'm sure you've heard about uh, HOCAT, you know, hypothermic right. uh, herb, ozone. Yes, it's, it's it's actually one of the questions I have for you today. <laughs> okay. Then we will if, we're, if, if, if we are able to get there today, if not, maybe next week again. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. So uh, that, uh, that, that is it. Yeah. You upgrade or augment uh, oxygen utilization simply by ozone therapy. Then you also, uh, I mean, we don't have it yet in, in our center, but it is coming soon. I hope uh, the exchange rate we really not keep uh, escalating <laughs> so that our budget will really contain it. Contain right. it. As I said, it costs about twenty five US, uh, twenty five thousand US dollars. Wow. Well, uh, I believe you 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 get it in hopefully before the end of twenty twenty two. And and uh, I will be very delighted to be one of the first people to utilize it when it comes. <laughs> <Fantastic>. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Because I really want to know how much of the oxygen circulating in my blood that my cells are actually utilizing. I mean, that that will give that will be a good a good uh, determinant of how efficient 
the systems in the body, my metabolic system and all other systems are functioning uh, that way. Good, good again. So now let me come to the subject of ozone generator. In one of my previous episodes, I brought one locally made small ozone generator to show people. But I know that there are more sophisticated ones out there that people can, that can be used in clinical settings and what have you. You described about 23 rounds of administration of ozone. Now, uh, the one that I have definitely cannot administer ozone through all those various routes. Now, I want you to talk about ozone generators in general and highlight the key considerations before somebody gets an ozone generator. And then maybe also further elaborate on how medical ozone is produced again. You mentioned it last week, but I want, you know, for emphasis sake, to explain how these ozone generators produce medical ozone. But then the important thing really in this question is, what is an ozone generator? And then I wanted to highlight the key considerations that somebody has to look at before uh, purchasing or obtaining a unit of an ozone generator. An ozone generator is a device that generates ozone or medical ozone from medical grade oxygen. And it is very key for any practitioner setting up ozone treatment or engage in ozone treatment protocols. Because just like any other thing, the concentration or the dose that you intend to deliver must be very accurate. As if you are delivering a lower concentration or dose than you had for a particular protocol, it means you will not see the results. That is too low, no result. On the other hand, if you are delivering too higher a concentration that we had intended for a particular protocol, it will also cause harm. So you don't want to run into any of these precarious you know, situations. So when you are to set up on ozone therapy, the first consideration is for you to know the reputable source or company that produce ozone generator. Dr. Schellenberger Frank brags that as far as he knows, there is only one company that is Longevity, a Canadian company that has a reputable ozone generator that if you are saying you are harvesting 25 gamma units is exactly 25 gamma units. However, those of us also involved in the field with him, we know Promo Life. They are located in Lafayette in Arkansas in the United States. They also produce good ozone generators. So, so far to the best of my knowledge, these are the two companies or manufacturers of ozone generators that I would recommend for any practitioner wanting to go into ozone uh, therapy. Let me classify medical ozone gener uh, I mean therapy. Because the kind of machine you have, yes, it generates ozone. But just like you demonstrated rightly, it's bubbling through water. That is ozone water. It will generate, yes, water. I mean, ozone water. Just to add to it, ozone has what you call a short life, uh, you know, half life. The half life of ozone, because it's a very unstable molecule. So that when you generate that water, it is advisable if it is at room temperature, you use it within 30 minutes. That is the half life of ozone. However, if you are able to refrigerate that water, it can last up to 24 hours. I think this is important information that we would, uh, I mean, I have to share. So in summary, that is the quality of ozone generator is really very important. Now to recap, the principles of ozone generation, you have medical grade oxygen, which must be very, very pure. 95% of 
or higher, pure oxygen. Then you pass it through this uh, ozone generator via uh, tubings, which uh, are called uh, uh, cathodes. Then as you pass in this oxygen through the generator, there is a UV light source that will split the oxygen to ozone and the ozone is harvested. A good ozone generator must carry what you call distrust because as ozone is generated, if it is not quickly converted back to oxygen and it escapes into the room, the room may be filled up with ozone and you don't want to inhale ozone. And I emphasize again, if you ever make that mistake of inhaling the zone, you will live to regret and you give your <laughs> experience because it causes pulmonary irritation and you keep coughing, coughing, coughing until I give you the antidote for zone. What is the antidote? That is vitamin C. I give you, once you have that and I give you 100 milligrams of vitamin C, it will actually cancel the effect. But for those who are asthmatics or those people with COPD, uh, chronic uh, obstructive pulmonary disease, they really got to be careful. They don't want to play or make a mistake of inhaling, you know, ozone at all because the effect in them is exacerbated. Thank you very much. Um, we are going to go on a break. Okay, you wanted to say something? Yes. So, no, I was just saying that I'm giving the, the summary on ozone machine. Look out for the qualities and the reputation, I mean, repeatable source. And then you know that it is giving you the same concentration that you had intended because each of these protocols, they have different concentration that we use. So it is very important to know. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, we will go on the short break. And then when we come back, well, I will still ask you more questions on these same ozone generators. Uh, for example, um, there are medical practitioners who may want to incorporate ozone therapy into their practice. You will need to guide such people how to go about it. That's one. I mean, do they need to get specialized training? Where can they get that training? How much does that training cost? And then regulatory issues. Uh, is ozone therapy one of the approved therapies in orthodox medical practice or is it only for alternative practitioners we need to also shed light on all of that and then of course private users who want to maybe oh can i get an ozone generator for my house and then use it without harm i need you to address all of those areas when we come back from this short break again our viewers this is expose with tony akiyami and we are having an interview with dr john to agbie the medical director of In-Country Medical Limited, situated in Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He's been answering questions re regarding oxygen therapy, ozone therapy, and different aspects of its modality, the uh, routes of administration, and the benefits, and then the precautions and cautions that we need to take in the administration of these gases that can be very useful, but if carelessly handled, can also be harmful on the other hand. So we'll be going on a short break. When we come back, Dr. John is still on set to answer more questions. Introducing healthy newsletters on various health topics by Reverend Tony Akiyemi.
order call plus two three four nine zero seven three two nine two one zero zero Welcome back. This is Expose with Tony Akinyemi. What we need, like I always say, is not more medication, but more education. For the best prescription is knowledge. To be informed is to be transformed. To be uninformed is to be deformed. And Dr. John Tor Agbiye is on set to inform us properly about medical ozone and oxygen therapy and their various ways of administering them. Now, he has talked to us extensively about ozone and ozone generators and the reputable sources where ozone generators can be obtained and how ozone therapy can be one of the wonderful therapies that can be incorporated into clinical practice by practitioners. Now, I want Dr. John to please help us address these pertinent questions. Number one. Let's assume I'm a doctor. I am not a doctor, but let's assume that I am a doctor. I have a clinic and I want to incorporate ozone therapy into my practice. Number one, is it allowed by conventional doctors to incorporate ozone therapy into their practice, particularly in our country, in Nigeria? Uh, number two, uh, if I want to incorporate ozone therapy into my practice, what sort of training do I need to undertake? What sort of certification do I need to get? Where can I get it? How much does it cost? Uh, these are things I want us to address. And then we'll come to those, uh, the other side, pri private users. If I am a layman, I'm not a medical practitioner of any sort, and I have heard about ozone therapy, and I'm thinking of getting an ozone generator for my house, is that possible? Let me answer that question by first saying medical ozone therapy by the guidelines is only prescribed by people with medical degrees. Right. That is it, because that is number one. That's to say that the, the Dr. Shalem Badger that I, I mentioned formed what you call American Academy of ozonotherapy. That is the body that trains all people with medical degrees to, and he certifies them in ozone therapy. That is the first uh, step. You have to go for the training. It is so competitive that uh, before he announces the, uh, you know, the, the openings are usually you know, feed up. So you would. However, as to get a way through that, in uh, in West Africa, we formed an association known as Integrative Medicine West Africa. That association is on its way for organizing itself. Actually, by the time we started ozone therapy in Nigeria about five years ago. Um, we had some trainings in Lagos and Abuja. This association's goal and aim is actually to train, you know, doctors. They don't really need to have to go to the United States to be certified by the American Academy of Ozonotherapy conducted by Frank Shellen Bajer. But we are working towards that. Uh, so, ozone. Uh, therapy and prescription by law or by its guideline is practiced by people with medical degrees. So when we started out this, we trained the number of nurses and to the best of my knowledge, those nurses that were trained by us in the country are not up to 10 and they really know how to do no ozone therapy, especially the technique known as DIV, that is direct intravenous, you know, ozone therapy. You have to know what you are doing. Number one, you have to know the right size of needle to use. Right. We use the 27 gauge needle, 
which is of the size of a proboscis of a mosquito. And this is the point I use to defray those who will just come up that you guys are injecting the air in people, you cause air embolism. I said there is nothing like that. If you look at the size of the needle that we're using, there is no way you can cause air embolism. Then there is what we call the flow rate as you inject. It's not more than two cc per minute. So I ask them, with, with that kind of approach, how can you cause air embolism? But that is a discussion for another day. This I'm just emphasizing the fact that for you to use ozone therapy, you must be trained and you must know what you are doing. So um, the second uh, question is, um, can you buy an uh, ozone generator and put it in your house? My recommendation is that, yes, like the type you have with you, that is fine. You can generate ozone wa water. But if you go into disease management and disease training, it is more technical coming up with these uh, protocols. It involves a lot of factors, uh, you know, put together. Just like, like I said, is that every protocol has its own condition. If I'm using a uh, prolozone, if there is a certain concentration or dose that I should use for prolozone, that is for the intra-articular, you know, injection. So is it with the intra-tumoral? You know, you can inject ozone directly into the tumor, uh, and then it will have its own. It's just like a uh, prostate, to we inject or prolozone, you know, directly. So that is the second one. I would advise that if it is for medical zone, you have to work with a medical, you know, doctor. You uh, The law aside does not uh, allow people to start, you know, using administering ozone anyhow without, you know, training. I tell my, my staff on the first training that just like the, uh, that man lying on the, on the table, can just walk up and jump with ozone therapy. You can also take him dead from that table if you do the wrong thing. So <laughs> that's the first thing I tell them. So you have to do it, you know, right, so that you you don't have any of the problems. Uh, Doctor Robbins in New York has had tens of thousands of I mean ozone treatment DIV. He has never had a problem. Number three, the cost. As I said, so far, there are these two sources that I know, the promo life in the United States and the longevity in Canada. On the average basis, the Canadian uh, ozone generators uh, longevity is a lot more uh, spending, although because it is really rugged. They, they give you a warranty of about 20 years on, wow. on it. And uh, yeah, they, it is really rugged. I think it was the first. And likewise, uh, the promo life. So in our center, I have both the longevity from Canada and also I have uh, the one from uh, promo life that is less uh, spending. On average basis, the one for Canada, they used to cost about three to 4,000 US dollars. And uh, promo life, they have different versions there. It's about two to $3,000, you know, a unit. What about the training costs for those who want practitioners who want to train? How much would the training cost? Well, uh, are you talking of the U.S. training or the one in the in here? The U.S. training costs a lot. Uh, Dr. Shellen budget charges close to ten thousand dollars. Wow, per practitioner. You know, you have to be certified, and that is if you are if if you are lucky to get a, a spot. It's By the time he <laughs> advertises, the whole place is you know fed up. But uh, here in the country, we have really train people we have uh, just one or two people that really know what they they are doing in terms of you know ozone therapy and uh, we can help uh, you know train people too and can can a conventional medical doctor an md in nigeria for example with a private hospital or clinic incorporate ozone therapy is it allowed by the nigeria medical association <laughs> Well, that is a technical issue, Reverend Tony. What we say, ozone is oxygen. So you are not giving a drug. It is when you're giving a drug, then a lot of issues comes up. Because a drug 
what's their three mechanisms, their receptors, their, uh, you know, ion channels or cyclic AMP mediated. This is why you start bringing in the issues of clinical trials, blah, 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 that you say this drug does this, so you must prove. So it has no restriction. Even in the United States, the FDA, that is the Food and Drug Administration, does not forbid the use of, you know, ozone therapy. The only condition is that it must be used by medical doctors who will prescribe it. And once a medical doctor prescri who is well-trained prescribes ozone uh, therapy, the trained nurse can administer, uh, administer it, just like they do with, you know, drugs, uh, other injections so, or so. And so uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, FDA doesn't uh, regulate or stop the use of, you know, ozone therapy. The other factor is what me and you know, you know that uh, the other side of the eye because of Ozone does so many things, and it is very inexpensive. It's threatening some people's, you know, business, <laughs> and you not <laughs> look at it, <laughs> you know, lightly. Yes, yeah. uh, that they do everything. Like you can go on the internet. All that I'm saying now, you can see one or two comments there on the inter internet um, condemning, you know, ozone with no justifiable, you know, reasons why you condemning it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I feel you and I hear you clear, loud and clear, <laughs> you know. Uh, I, I told somebody the other day, I said, um, if you go online to search for medical information, you will find for and against. Many people will write for, many will write against. And I said, it, it's, it, it depends on who you are listening to, it depends on the source. It also depends on it also depends on the motive of the person who wrote the article. Sometimes the various industries actually sponsor articles in order to, you know, uh, find a way to beat down the competition. You know, <laughs> and it, it is no longer pure science as we used to know it these days. It has now become a kind of an economic warfare. Uh, and sometimes, like I say, it's no longer pure science, but it has become political science. <laughs> you know? right. and, let me, and let me add to that, Reverend Tony. In terms of safety of ozone therapy, you know, Germany is the country where ozone therapy is most, uh, you know, used. They have done a study involving over one million you know, people that were administered ozone. And they came up with a statistic that the level of safety of ozone, listen, is 0 0.0007, 0 0.307. Not even aspirin has that level of, you know, safety. This is what, uh, you know, they, uh, they brag about. In Germany today, every day, seven, about 7,000 German doctors prescribe ozone therapy to over 100,000 you know, patients. The queen, they have what we call Royal Ozone, you know, hospital. So let me stop at that point. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Um, you mentioned something also, which I also want us to emphasize very well. And that is the issue of uh, the risk of inhaling ozone. Of course, you also mentioned the antidote, but the risk of inhaling ozone uh, the gas itself, you know, inhaling it into the lungs. Because when you inhale it into the lungs, it can irritate the lungs. It can cause serious problems. Like you said, when you give vitamin C, uh, that helps to kind of neutralize it. I wanted to explain the mechanism. What is it exactly that vitamin C does? Is it because vitamin C is an antioxidant? Or is there any other mechanism by which vitamin C helps in reversing the negative effect of the inhalation of ozone gas. Very correct. Maybe I didn't mention this earlier, but ozone is an is a very powerful oxidant. And right. vitamin C being an antioxidant, it neutralizes the effect of ozone simply. That's why when I do uh, intravenous infusions that contains vitamin C, 
I don't, uh, I will give ozone and will not do the infusion until after one to or, or two hours. Because if you give ozone immediately, it will, uh, vitamin C will neutralize its effect. So simply, ozone is an oxidant and vitamin C is an antioxidant. So it neutralizes that, uh, I mean, the side effects of, you know, ozone. Thank you, sir. Um... I will ask you my final question for today, and I still have a number of questions. Uh, I hope next week we can have you one more, one more uh, episode. The, the final question I want to ask, I want us to talk a little bit about the economy in Nigeria in particular, and I know this will be applicable to other countries as well. Now, we've been talking about ozone therapy, oxygen therapy, and various other such therapies. and. Uh, Someone has said that if we implement ozone therapy in particular in Nigeria, for example, in our medical system in Nigeria, if everywhere ozone therapy is available, oxygen therapy is available, these medical gases we are talking about, somebody has estimated that there could be up to 40% cut in healthcare delivery budgets if we implement these therapies in Nigeria. How true can that be, and how do you explain or justify that claim? Simply put, that is very true, and this has been actually documented. And we say if the federal government would implement ozone therapy in the healthcare system in Nigeria, the healthcare delivery budget would be down by 40%. This is, you know, proven. Remember, this is a product that its application covers almost any medical conditions, apart from trauma where you have broken leg or that you need the surgical repair. Ozone therapy, along with other uh, treatment, other even conventional treatment, would deliver some effective results. For example, combination of ozone therapy with antibiotics will even make the antibiotics even more effective. For example, combination of ozone therapy with even chemotherapy in, in treatment of you know, cancer will make you the, I mean, the, the people to use a lower uh, dose of you know, chemotherapy and thereby saving, you know, cost. Then lastly, the one I say, the preconditioning, what it will imagine if you use using ozone, I mean, therapy, the preconditioning that is for prevention, to really prevent people from getting, you know, diseases. It means that you would spend le less on your budget for treating, you know, conditions like, you know, malaria. People would be, Few, only fewer people or, or the percentage of people coming down with uh, malaria would be less. Wouldn't you be saving money on uh, anti-malaria drugs? And so is it with other, you know, medications. Once people take medications because there are sick, here is a product that if you give, we actually make people's immune system to be upregulated. They would not calm down with some of these uh, diseases. Or even if they calm down with these diseases, the recovery time or the duration of stay in the hospitals will be shorter. It was also proven during this uh, COVID-19, uh, you know, people that, I mean, ozone therapy was actually used in some uh, countries. You can see that people who are, maybe they, they were to be hospitalized for 10 days with ozone therapy, it costs down to, you know, five days. Wouldn't you be saving money? Certainly you will be saving uh, saving money. But when you bring some of these things up, some smart guy that we ask you that have you used uh, double blind placebo controlled, you know, studies for ozone before we would accept it, its own use. I think we need to move beyond uh, that. Other countries um, are using ozone and they also use it during, you know, COVID-19. But here, what happened when we try to introduce this, some smart guys just would ask the question that we used placebo, double-blind <laughs> control studies with uh, ozone. I told them that, no, 
Ozone is not a drug. You only use clinical trials when you are doing the, what we call a proof of concept that this drug, as you claim, works via receptors or ion channels or cyclic AMP, you know, mediated. Here is, I mean, no drug. You are asking me for a placebo controlled, you know, studies. It is not uh, fair. And uh, it is actually relatively very inexpensive. Maybe that's the reason why it is not ozone therapy. It's not being pushed. Apart from the ozone generator and the medical grade, uh, you know, oxygen, and then the right uh, syringes and then needles. What else do you need? No. Expertise, just human expertise. That's all that is oh. needed. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, just, right. just the expertise, which we now have in Nigeria. But right. yeah. Yeah. Let thank me, you, let me stop know, at, that, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you so, you so much. much. You know, during the during the thick of the COVID uh, COVID nineteen pandemic, particularly in the year twenty twenty, when the lockdowns and all the different things were ongoing, you know, somebody, a medical doctor, actually came up and did a video, and was uh, trying to suggest very strongly that while different companies were trying to develop vaccines for COVID, that there was a hydroxychloroquine that it should be administered. After all, the safety profile is very good. That even if it is not effective, at least it's not going to cause any harm. And if it turns out to work well, then we have gained. You know, somebody proposed that actually. And I was having a conversation with uh, a doctor and he said, no, 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 hydroxychloroquine cannot work and this and that. He said it is vaccine. I said, at that time, that was uh, around May, May of 2020, no single COVID vaccine was already in the market at that time. And I said, there is something that is already in the market and you are pushing against it. And you are waiting for something that has not even come into the market. You are defending it. It has not even been produced. It has not been tested. And you're already defending it. And something that is already available that we can quickly go ahead and test. You are saying, no, it cannot work. So I can see how people develop sentiments for or against, depending on where their interest lies. There's a lot of a lot of conflict of interest going on in our world and it makes science very very difficult to practice these days uh, because people speak from both sides of their mouths depending on how it serves their interest or how it comes against their interest and i'm happy that you are championing a very beautiful cause here where we can have very good uh, available affordable and very safe protocols that people can use, you know, to better their lot when it comes to wellness, either prophylactically or therapeutically. Once again, Dr. John, we thank you very much for your time with us today on Expose with Tony Akinyami. Uh, we will need you to come one more time on this subject because I still have a number of questions I have not been able to ask you today. And uh, we would like to have one more episode so we can go there. I want us to talk about EWOT. I want us to talk about hyperbaric oxygen therapy, HBOT. I want us to talk about HOCAT and maybe a little more on oxygen and ozone again in our next episode. Viewers, I want to thank you for your time with us. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I will ask Dr. John to give us details about his clinic and his contact so that those who want to contact him in Nigeria can do so. Uh, by the way, Dr. John also joins us, you know, every Monday on Expose. And if you look into the chat room, he's always, you know, chatting and giving his perspective each time we have any subject we are discussing. Thank you, Dr. John. Over to you. Your contact. Once again, our center is in country Medicare, and we are located in Abuja, in Al Aldenko Estate. Galadimawa. So those of you with Google, we are on, on Google map. So just Google in country Medicare and then you will see the address pop up as 158 Second Avenue, Adenko Estate, Abuja. The telephone number to reach us is 0802 644 1793. You can also visit our website, www.incountrymedicare.com. One word, incountrymedicare.com. You can even book your appointments on the website, and then you can even 
pay where the need arises even before you you come it is my pleasure Reverend Tony, once again, let me assure you, I am with you as I told you from day one. The reason I came back after 30 years in the, in the United States is to make a difference. And you've been a great uh, facilitator. You've been a great you know, partner. May the Lord continue to guide and then give you good health and then good uh, strength. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so very much. Thank you so, so very much. much. So, so viewers, much. this is where we draw the cutting today on Expose with Tony Akiyami. Don't forget what we need is not more medication, but more education for the best prescription is knowledge. Do have a very beautiful, wonderful week ahead of you in this beautiful month of October. See you same platform, same time, 8 p.m. Nigerian time on Facebook and YouTube. In case you are yet to subscribe to our YouTube channel, please, this is the time to do it. Just click on that subscribe button and there is a notification bell. Just click on that bell so that when next we come live or upload a video, you can always be notified by your device, your phone, your iPad, your laptop, your desktop, and then you can join us. And if you have missed any past episode, all of them are still there in our archive. You can go back to YouTube and you can bring it out. Just type in Expose with Tony Akiyemi in the search engine and it will bring it out. If you know the particular topic you want to view, just type in the topic as well, Tony Akemi, and put the topic, it will bring it out. And then you can look at all of these and educate yourself one more time. Dr. John, thank you very much. Again, I thank all our technical crew for doing a good job. It's been a wonderful evening. Bye-bye and have a very beautiful week ahead. Bye -bye. <laughs>